Welcome to Snakes and Otters, a pointless discussion of eternal questions. Get ready. We're about to live in your head rent-free. Hello, Otterites. This is episode 153. I am Martin. And I'm Robert. And I'm Francis. All right, boys. I'm sitting in the captain's chair finally this month. Uh, luckily, we had a fifth weekend, uh, a fifth Friday of the month. We, sh- we should have let, me- let you take one of the other episodes. Yeah, I- well, I whatever. Feel, I feel selfish for having done three this month. That's well, we okay. kind of forced you into the last one. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. In other words, I said, this is your freaking idea, man. You're going to carry it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, which is how I get this episode. So it's a hoop joob <coughs> That's right. hoop joob So hoop joob means anything goes. Wave your arms in the air like you just don't care. That's right. So anything goes, we can talk about whatever the hell we want. And what we're going to talk about today. Are we going to talk about anal probes? No. I think No. <coughs> But I'm good. <coughs> and I made, uh, I made yeah, Francis no. cough. Yes. You're killing me over here. No, 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 no. So, You're killing me, Smalls. That's right. Well, as, as Chef would say, no, no, no. We don't do that. <laughs> no. So, Hoopajoob today is about one simple question. And that's how much validity does the shopping cart theory of morality hold? So... Okay, so you got to give us this. Yeah. So, lay this whole thing out. I'm going to lay... I'm probably, any, probably all of our listeners have already heard this. But I'm going to... Perhaps in passing, without really a lot of yeah. uh, detail. Right. So it's called the Shopping Cart Theory of Morality or uh, Self-Governance, which I find interesting is the people have termed this as a, as a factor of self-governance, and I want to talk about that I would say that's bit. kind of a stretch to go from morality to self-governance. Yeah. Well, I think even the morality part's a little bit of a stretch, but it's certainly... Dark, whether or not your, I think it's a measure of your character. Yeah. Okay. So the Shopping Cart is, according to this, is the ultimate... Litmus test for whether a person is capable of self-governing. I don't understand what they mean by self-governing by that, but again, we'll talk about that. So to return the shopping cart is an easy and convenient task, which we all recognize is a good thing to do, right? Now here it says, correct and appropriate. Uh, I think that carries some moral weight with it that I'm not entirely okay with. Because it sounds like an absolute. Mm -hmm. Because I can make an argument that it's not an absolute. That, you know, if I've got to be somewhere and every second counts, I'm probably not going to return that shopping cart. Especially depending on how far away I park from it. But anyways, uh, it says here to return the shopping cart is objectively right. Which again, eh, if it's objectively right, it's always right. There are no situations other than dire emergencies. Well, then it's not objectively right. Uh, they say, and it can only a Sith deals in absolutes. Exactly. I mm-hmm. love that. Very good. Very good, sir. <laughs> I like um, that, yeah. I just called him Anakin. Uh, I think I've had too much bourbon today. Yeah, really. Yeah, I just called me a whiny-ass bitch. <laughs> Isn't that what Anakin means? <laughs> yeah, whiny-ass man boy, yeah. yeah. Is, that what, is that the translation in Tatooine? Yeah, I think Anakin so. Yeah, is... yeah. Into galactic standard, yeah. <coughs> Tatooine and then... Um, it says, there are no situations other than dire, emerg- dire emergencies in which a person is not able to return their cart. I would say that's probably relatively true, uh, yeah. unless you are disabled. But if you're disabled, you probably don't have a regular cart anyways. Or somebody is with you. Yeah, or you got the little buzz around go kart thingy, right? Which you can't take back in, right? So that was the point of having it, right? And you can't get it unless you go in. So So you got to leave it out. Um, Simultaneously, it's not illegal to abandon your shopping cart. See, I think "abandon" is an interesting way because this is obviously phrased in such a way to lead you. Yeah, that's correct. To a certain interpretation. That's how it's written. Yes. Therefore, the shopping cart represents. The apex example of whether a person will do what is right without being forced to do it. That, I think, is closer to the point of the question. Uh, Yes. No one will punish you for not returning the shopping cart, and no one will fine you or kill you for not returning it. You gain nothing by returning it. So why do it is basically the point. And to me, when I first read this, I thought, you know, I like this theory. Because I think it is a good barometer of the kind of person you are. Yes. And to me, that's all it is, is a barometer of the kind of person you are. Yes. And I don't mean, you know, like if I don't return it this time, I, you know, I, I, I can have a valid reason. I might be running late for something very important. I had to stop and pick up the drinks for a meeting I'm already late to. Whatever your reason is. Right. Or, you know, I forgot to buy something for my kid's birthday party. Damn straight, I'm going to hurry up because it's my fault I got it. Not that the wife didn't tell me until five minutes before the party started. It's still my problem. So, I don't believe it's an absolute. I think it's a mostly, most of the time thing. 
it tells you whether or not you are considerate of others. And it's not considerate of other shoppers even. Because for the most part, I like to get my carts inside because they're not wet with rain right. uh, or dirt generally. You know, if stuff is blown on them if it's a windy, dirty day. But if it's in the winter, they're most they're more likely to be warm too. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to put my hands on that cold metal because you know I, I got cold sensitive hands, so I don't want to touch the cold metal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come on, Anakin. Yeah. So, so anyways, I you know plus like, why push it? From outside in when there's already one right there. So that's why I do Oh, sometimes I will get one from uh, outside. Like if I see there's a lot of carts already outside because they haven't had a chance to come out and get them, mm-hmm. I'm more likely to get one then because otherwise I might have to come back out and get one anyways. And that's happened. Yeah. So who are you doing this for is the question. I guess you're kind of doing it for people who are parking. <coughs> they do get in the way of parking. Yep. And... You know, you might be, you know, also, you're, by returning it, you're making sure it doesn't run in somebody else's car when it starts rolling off. But you're also doing it for people who work at the store. And I've heard people uh, put forth that, well, it's giving the people who work there something to do. It's making sure they have a job. No, all you're doing is making sure that they have to take more time to do this one thing that they have to do and still have to do all the other million things they have to do inside. Because it's not like, you know, they can just loaf around because nobody can hire enough workers that's right in those kinds of jobs right now so to me it's just a good barometer of whether or not you're a considerate person that's right now that in and of itself probably tells you a whole lot about other people Mm -hmm. so what are are you guys thoughts about the the shopping cart theory like i said for me it's not an absolute it doesn't tell me whether or not you can self-govern i'm not even really sure well, I, I, I like the idea of talking about self-governing. What does that mean? I agree. It, that is a poor choice of words. Well, there, there is a definition of this for okay. this one article. All right. That's fair. Uh, usually comprises some or all of the following. There's only three things, so this is not by any means a comprehensive or exhaustive, okay. exhaustive right. list. A code of conduct that outlines acceptable behavior within the unit or group. Eh, I can sort of see that, you know. It's kind of like peer pressure conduct. And kind of, you could okay. A means of ensuring external authority does not become involved unless and until certain criteria are satisfied. This has absolutely no bearing on this because, no, like, it, you know, nobody's going to punish you. Yeah, that's right. Or reward you. That's right. Outside authority is completely outside the right. But that, but that's what self governance supposedly means. You know, right. But you can operate in that without getting others involved. Sure. Like, in other words, you don't break the law. Right. Uh, a means of facilitating the intended functions of the unit or group. Eh, you could you could sort of make that argument. argument. Yeah, that's a teleological argument. Something Ooh, look at him! You he, love he's that a word. Big bird. Right. Yeah, it, it, it goes to the purpose of the thing. That that you know, a hammer that hammers well is fulfilling its purpose. That's a teleological argument. It 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 works towards its natural intended end. So it's a utilitarian it, argument. It, yes, it is. That is correct. It's it, it, it's functioning as to its purpose. So, so yeah, which is the part it. that is functioning to its purpose? The person, the shopping cart, or the corral that you return it to? Well, in this case, here, since it's a complex system, all three. Aha, very good. That is the proper answer. <coughs> That's correct. Because, it is, as I say, it's a complex system. But for teleological points, the shopping cart must be returned to the corral. For, uh, for the corral's for, purpose to for be for the corral's purpose and the, and the shopping cart's purpose. No, I don't think so. I don't think the where where you get the shopping it's, it's cart. It's intended to be. Yeah, but those are that's but the, so, the corral is a relatively new thing. Yes, it is, and we're and we're speaking about that. But that is the intention here because the corral exists. Therefore, teleologically, the cart is intended to go there. Uh, it's an attempt to impose new behavior. It is, but it's 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 still it's that so that, it's changing the teleological function of the cart. That's why I say I don't think the the cart. This has nothing to do with the cart. Uh, it really has nothing to do with the corral. It's trying to make it easier on the employee. Well, and and keep and, the shopping carts from bumping into things. Bumping into cart because you know it's a recognized problem of I'm tired of carts blowing around the lot and slamming into my car and leaving dents. And also homeless people taking one from the edge of the parking lot 
they return it to the yeah, prowl, they're yeah, probably it, less it, likely it, to come it's and get It's a complex them. system, but it's intended to to form an efficient system. Yeah, the system is the system efficient has, removal, uh, moving right, parts. And, and, but the and part itself is bring an attempt to bring order to a disordered previous paradigm. And that is the teleological question. Because that's the, the, the intent. Well, again, to me, it has nothing to do with Cart. It's just moving part of the. That's great. Right. It is a part yeah. of the teleological question. But it fun- when it's functioning as it's intended, that's its teleology. That's its intention. Uh, all of that is kind of a roundabout way. It, it, in many respects, it's irrelevant to the questions you're talking about here. Because those are just reasons one can act, can self govern. Those are, those are motivating factors, if I understood you correctly. Those are mo- those three things that you listed. Those are reasons to, for a self-governing person to act. Well, in, 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 in a, a general sense, I don't, like the second sense. one about authority has absolutely nothing to do with this. Not in this case, yeah. but in a general, if if you want to, if, if you're going to draw the lens back a little bit, yes, those are reasons given for a person to act. Where it, and that there's a presumption in there that they would not necessarily act. Otherwise, well, yeah, and without the corral, obviously they wouldn't because there is no place because nobody's going to take their exactly. cart and take it back up to. Although there was a time when that wasn't uncommon, where you would take the cart back up to the front of the store and yeah. you would just leave it in front of the, the that walkway. Yeah, they were done. I remember doing that many times. Sure. Um, so and you know you make the argument well, right? And, getting and, that out of the parking lot was a good yeah, thing to do. Then. And most stores no longer put carts out front. Right. They're, They're usually, usually in a sales space now, to a degree. Yes. Product space. Um, yeah, that's valuable space. Yeah. So you can make the argument that where you put the cart is the real question. What do you do with it? Correct, yes. Do you leave it where other cars can bump into it? Or it can damage other cars by being blown into them? Or do you put it someplace where it is relatively easy and convenient for the next person, whether it be the person who gathers it, to put it back on the, 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 the line inside, mm-hmm. or the next shopper to just grab it and take it on inside? You know, you make it easier on the next person. Which, again, to me, goes back to the, are you a thoughtful person or are you Which not? That's, right. that's the key question here is, where is your motivations? Because all of this stands or falls, because your actions stem from your motivations. Generally speaking, yes. Yeah, in, 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 a, in a normal circumstance. Yeah. So, we're really not, the action itself, we've made a determination, this action says this about your motivations. It's multiple choice, what they could be. But if you self-govern, that means you do the action that you would not necessarily do otherwise. What are the what are the reasons that you self-governed to do that? Mm-hmm. And that's wherein you can decide whether your what your character level falls on. It's one of those three options. <coughs> you did it because uh, fear of uh, desire for reward or fear of punishment, which of course does not apply in this case here. Well, it could apply in the sense that it is a a, a peer. Uh, approval or disapproval? It, 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 yeah, it, it's it's a little bit complicated. I think that's a, it's somewhat implied. Yeah, it, it is. It's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a, that's that's a soft uh, a, a soft reward punishment system well, as opposed a, to a hard. Well, peer pressure is a soft authority. Let's put it that. Well, way. Yeah, well depending on your age, that's a very hard authority. We can be. That's correct. Here, well, so, there's also family pressure. Oh yes, I shamed my brother into uh, taking him back. So when I was taking him to the store uh, quite a bit, whenever I take him, I, I get. Said to him, you know, that says whether or not you're a good person. After that, he he always does. He always put it away. So, we're, my brother's more thoughtful than I thought he well, was. Well, it's we also Mrs. Martin the same way. Well, what are you doing? Why aren't you taking that cart back? Oh, oh. and then she went all it back. Yeah, and it's not just that 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 says he is a good person. It says you judge him to be good, yeah. whether or not he does that. So it might be his wishing to please you versus be, wishing yeah. to be seen. In general, one's a generality, well, one's a specific specificity, yes. and you know, it also could just be never really thought about it, and that's true too, because a lot of people don't, yeah. you know. But and but you know, that kind of goes back to one of those great sins I think that uh, most of us are guilty of in this modern American society of not paying attention. Yeah, yeah, I, th- mm-hmm. I think that can that can actually be the more I think on that, that is quite often uh, a, a sinful act. To not pay attention when we should be paying attention. There's a presumption when you should be paying attention. Yeah. Well, and depending on severity, it could be mortal or it could be venal. Well, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily yeah. making a depth. Probably the shopping cart does not rise to mortal sin. No. I would Probably. Say not. No. I would not say categorically because you never know. Well, you could make, if, if you judge it by what, how we judge mortal sin, 
uh, where it where it falls is it's, brave it, act. Yeah, it's, it's not a brave it, act. Yeah. But the other two components would be present. Like if you know yes. that this is the right thing to do, and you willfully and do you not, could do it, and you and you could do it, and you willfully choose not to. Yes, it has two of the three definite. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. But why is it the right thing to do? See, that's the real question. It, yes. Is it really? Because to me, this speaks more to where I'm going to go with this. But I want to, before we, before I get to my theory about why this is a thing, I, I think we, should, we need to talk about why is that something we should do. Yes, because to me, this is, I think that the definitions they're pushing here or the, or the theories are a little, like, well, that might be ascribing a little too much weight and value to this as far as society goes. <coughs> but yeah, it, it can be an indicator of your thoughtfulness, of your character. Um, and again, I, I do it primarily because I'm hoping to set an example for others in that if you leave the cart in the space, that's one less space that cars can park in. Mm-hmm. And it's much more likely to damage someone else's property. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of a bug of mine. I don't want my property damaged. Therefore, I would like to give others that same respect. So what Martin is saying is, Hey, you kids, get your shopping carts off my lawn. And in return, <laughs> I'll keep my shopping carts out of your lawn. Exactly. Because yeah, there's, a, there's a reciprocity. Yes, there. I'm not going to ask you to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. So yes. therefore, because I don't want the carts in the spaces in the way and possibly damaging... I'm respectful of other people's things. To me, you put the card away. So what Martin is doing here, because uh, I throw this out, because we've not used this one, because we, uh, we do like some particular words. So this is Martin putting forth a logos as opposed to the pathos. This is that word of wisdom. That is the mm-hmm. logos. Yes. Right. And that's what, his nugget of wisdom here is that, you know, you respect me and I respect you. Golden rule stuff. Yeah, it's golden rule stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's what we call a logos. And of course, when somebody doesn't do it, that's when the pathos really does come in. Yeah, I mean, because it's like, uh, dear, are you a sociopath? Put your card away. Come on. Right, when well, you know, and that's another uh, question. Hey, Bjorn, what? Bjorn gives her a hard time for leaving the uh, radio volume dial on an odd number in the car. He says, only psychopaths do that, Mom. Put it back on an either five or an even number. I mean, that's... T- I just start laughing because I'm the same way. Yeah. It's yeah. like, no, volume can't be on 17. It has to be on 16 or 18. See, me, I'm always multiples of five whenever I do, whenever I do volume. Okay. Yeah. I, I can live with that. Yeah. Now, the funny thing is, my car... No threes and sevens. And no the nines. notches are not in increments of five. Once I realized that, it just bothered the hell out of me. But they are notches at particular points. So I got to have them at that particular <laughs> There point. you go. There you go. So it's a metaphorical five. I mean, she uh, is, of course, of, like, normal bent. And just what the hell does it matter? Turns it up until that's loud enough. Right. You know, but I can't do that. It's it's loud enough, and it's even numbered. Okay, I'm good. Exactly, exactly. I can understand a little bit. Uh, you can't tell what my numbers are on mine, so I don't ever watch it. Right, that's like only, mine. It just have the one little notch in each, like yeah. six or seven. My, my, neither of mine have it at all. You just, uh, you, you can see it go up or down, but there, and it'll give some numbers to it, but you have no idea where, where it really ends. Yeah, yeah. And it stays that way. But on my iPad, on my, on my iPhone, I load music onto there. It must be an uneven number. It must see, be. Now, it must have either five. Or really, <coughs> or zero, and the best, the perfect solution is if I'm going to load, to you know, two thousand songs. It currently I have three thousand songs exactly, exactly. Oh my God, that is way more anal than I. Oh yes, I'm, I'm, yeah, making okay. a, okay. I'm making a confession here, gentlemen. The, the, the total number is three thousand, yes. and every he's playlist, not ODC, he's CDO. That's right, and every <laughs> playlist has an even number uh, with a zero at the end of songs within that. Because right, so do not have an eleven song playlist, it must be ten songs. That's, well, yeah, that's too few, but that's correct. Right. Yeah, it's it's usually a hundred and twenty, forty, sixty, something like that. Dude, you know we can get you help. <laughs> I, I can get you a number of somebody to help you out with this stuff. I promise. All right, that's right. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just a thing. Now, I've done it other ways. I'm not, I don't have to do it. I've done 3,200, you know, or 2,500 on my... But on not 3,217. Oh, absolutely not. Not, yeah. not, uh, not unless I've made an error and I can't figure out, wait a minute, something's 
not transferring See, ride or and something. And I would argue with Bjorn that that's the psychopath. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, because I will, if I cannot find that error, uh, that sinking error, I'll wipe the whole damn thing and start over. You know, to, to get that to get that right, do it, yeah, because it, it has to be in a bunch of because about. in my car in particular, when you when you turn on uh, when you when it changes from song to song, you see how many songs are on there, right, in the playlist, or if you're playing just straight off the the the, the full everything in there, that number too, and it does that, it defaults to that occasionally. So I want to. I do not want to see song seventeen of twenty nine ninety eight. Oh, that would drive me nuts. Or wow. thirty oh twelve. Oh no, three thousand. Thank you very much. Wow. Okay. So I don't know what to do with that right now. Yeah. I, it's yeah. Like, I I don't know what that says about your character. That's right. Well, I'm it says something. That's for sure. That, well, it, it does also says that we value order. Yes. Yes. And yes. order is a legitimate. Thing to value it, it, societal it, order. Your value yeah, is societal yes. order. That's your major <laughs> yes. motivation for putting the cart back. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So order can be an inherent good. It is not necessarily. That's correct. An that's inherent good. the first. It depends point. on your how you impose the order. See, and that's where my theory is going. Yeah, yeah. is that an, an imposition of order is not? Uh, it may be order, but it has it. it it's tyranny. Well, it, it's exactly imposition it, of order. Is the imposition, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the overrides. Your fine. If my playlist is three thousand two hundred and four, you're fine with that because that's my playlist. You don't well, care. Of course, that's but right. Your yeah. playlist has to be thirty two hundred. Three thousand is preferable, but yes, okay. yes, I knew he was going to say that. Okay, <coughs> so that's, see, that's the difference. If you're not imposing your order, you're not imposing a world. Right. He's keeping his he's, uh, psychoses to himself. Yes, no, and I'm fine with that. And. That's right. Keep your psychoses on your lawn. I'll keep my psychoses on my lawn. Well, and there's also a desire for, I think in, in a moral question here, there's also a desire for the good of the other, which uh, which is inherent to morality. With the shopping cart, I can see. With the playlist count, no. <laughs> because it, well, because it inherently affects no one else. Right. No one else knows. It, nobody would even notice it. Uh, even if somebody else were to pick up my thing, they just right. okay, it is what it is. Uh Whereas on the shopping cart, absolutely, because one of my moral motivations is I want to make it easier on that next person. Next, well, yeah. that next person, yeah. which is probably the employee. Right. Their job is hard enough, especially in cold weather. Yes. Uh, or rainy weather to do this, yeah. so they don't have to chase it. I'll do my part. Pushing carts is no fun. I no, mean, even, although they do have some nifty tools for that now. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. yeah. I don't even want to hear about them whining about it now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you got to drive that cart thing out here and plug it in and walk behind it? I used yeah. to have to jam those things in in a tie when it was 85 degrees outside. Yeah. Or wearing a windbreaker when it was, you know, <coughs> 25 below. <laughs> yeah, I used to have to wear a tie as a stock boy at Kmart. Yep. Hey, go get those carts, 214. Because yeah, okay. you were just a number, right? Yep. Uh, so collar it all soaked through. Yep. That hot pavement in Shively. So my theory about this is that the whole shopping cart thing is a symptom of a grand conspiracy. Oh, really? Okay. Continue. Uh, so the grand cons- conspiracy is one that I think Eric's kind of, sort of at least is aware of the idea of, but it's the grand conspiracy is getting us used, used to doing what authority wants us to do. Whether that authority is bowing to peer pressure. So big grocery. It's big grocery. Yeah. You're, you're upset at big grocery for making you take the cart back. Well, for trying to impose it anyway. To try to impose taking the cart back on big grocery. Well, I would do it anyways, because I'm a good person. (laughs) <laughs> well, you're suggesting but, that then this is all but, about conditioning. Oh. Well, yeah, I think this is a form of conditioning. Absolutely. Now, whether or not it, it truly is part of a grander conspiracy, I mean, it's a great, it's a great conspiracy theory for fun. But Shit. in many ways, this Ooh. is part of a... I feel like I don't even know you guys anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, who the F am I hanging out with? But in many ways, this is part of, uh, call it uh, greater trends in society, whatever, however you want to put it, but where... Uh, whatever disparate forces there are, whether it be big grocery, 
<laughs> I love that big grocery. I do that. I do that. <coughs> this is we. St- it, I'm always used to like my dentist for a long, long time was just a guy that kind of worked out of a house. His yeah. only employee was his wife. Right, that used to be the norm. That, yeah. So it was just him. And then when he retired, she set us up with one of these kind of chain dental places. And I'm telling her like, I don't want to go because I don't like big dental. Right. And she just was it, at me was like, it the one that starts with an M? Yes. Oh my God! They, all they do is try and sell you. They upsell you on dentistry. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you need to have four or five more cavities filled. It's like which cavities? Uh, they'll be there. They'll be there. By the time we get you scheduled, you'll have them. You'll yeah. have them. Yeah. And it's like. Or the she just looks at me like I don't even know what you mean. Right. Yeah. No. I I know exactly what you're talking <laughs> about. But this this whole thing Big of trying to uh, to impose a, a a it's kind of a conditioning just to do what you're quote unquote supposed to do. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, big grocery, I am not a rat you can feed pellets to. Beer maybe or bourbon. <laughs> I'm not going to push the lever and get a pellet for putting my cart back. That's right. But no, when you think about the well, societal pressure we're talking about here. Yeah. yeah. It's absolutely that. So think about mask wearing. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. To, to, yeah. Go, we're, we're go, there. go, go yeah. with it. So, when you think about the whole mask wearing... Mask wearing, to thing. a large degree, was a shame thing. Yeah. yeah. It was conditioning. You are a good person if you wear the mask. You're an even better person if you wear two masks. Mm-hmm. Now, come to find out, you know, well, maybe masks weren't the right thing to do to begin with, or one would have been just fine, depending on who you talk to. They're still arguing over that shit. Yeah, and it... They were pointless because you handled them too much anyway. You handled them too much, and the person you were dealing with at the store, even if they were wearing the little plastic gloves, I saw somebody at Thornton's once early on, they were wearing the, the gloves like you're wearing the <coughs> food prep. It's like, well, unless you change that between customers, it means nothing. Yeah. I mean, you'd, you'd have to take 20 minutes between every customer. Right. Or, or any, you know, any kind of service job you'd have to dress like doctors did right and change change out and scrub yeah. up constantly so a lot of that stuff but you were a bad person you were evil uh marcus aurelius has a person he knows on facebook i can't remember if he's a longtime friend just you know facebook acquaintance knows from groups mm-hmm. literally believes you are a murderer if you do not wear a mask ah yes there are those people out there yes that they have murderer bought, they have bought into that conditioning so much they're willing to uh, al- uh abrogate their own right to think yes in order to allow someone yeah. else to do it for them the, the, and this became a topic kind of with uh, uh i think it was kevin williamson he's sort of a well-known kind of pj influenced writer i would say um but it, the mask became a religious totem. Yes, it, it, they're a yarmulke. Yeah, um, it, you're part of the tribe. Yeah, and it, it would meant that you were worshiping at the altar of the of Fauci. Prophylactic. <laughs> well, yeah, you in know, many respects, that was yeah, correct. That I, he was the deity uh, that you uh, listened to. Right, and now to to put it out there, just to, so that listeners don't think we're crazy conspiracy. Well, we may be crazy conspiracy theorists, but at least on this, we were not wearing masks. Right? No, you didn't? You ever went to store when the, so Oh, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you had to... When well, they were kind of making you. Right, but I mean, how many times were you at a store waiting in line and somebody walked in without a mask and, you know, stormed out when they couldn't get oh, away with it? Oh, yeah. Who? Well, yeah, but that's my point. There were still people... There were people... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. ...that weren't and trying yeah. to get away with it. Yeah. But, you know, we just did it. It's fine. You got to wear it. Fine. No big deal. You know, if it helps, it helps. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, it did help in some ways because the instances of flu... Went down dramatically while we were wearing sure. the mask. Yeah, and actually, that's one of the things I fear is that they're going to point to that and say, "Well, you know what? Every flu season, we now need to mask." I don't think that's going to fly, but I think no, they're going to try. I think everybody's done. I think what really, if anything at all, reduced transmission. It was spacing. Spacing. You know, you know even washing not, your hands. Yeah, it's like people. You know, it's a good idea to wash your hands even when there's not a pandemic. Yeah, right. and, well, that's people been saying that in, in food industries and places like that for years, and people, most people go meh. Uh, those that do do, those that don't don't. Right. I will not. Wor- I will not eat at a place when I like. There was one time we were in um, uh, at No Charlie's. And I won't mention the chain because we don't eat there that often, and they're not a sponsor, uh, and now they never will be. But 
I was in the bathroom with an employee because you know they had the name tag on there, you know, a little white mm-hmm. shirt and black tie, all that kind of stuff, and or whatever they were wearing. And the guy did his business, walked out without washing his hands. Oh wow! Now maybe he washed his hands in the kitchen sink in the back, but I doubt it. You know, it's like holy crap! Uh, not eating here ever again. Yeah, hopefully he was only washing dishes. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I don't think he was one of the servers, but he was. He was definitely staff. Like, he had an O'Charlie shirt. I forget exactly what it was, but, you know, he wasn't my server, thank God. Because if he had been, I'd have been out of there. I would have been out of there. But the fact that he just didn't even think about it. Yeah, yeah. but I, I think the most effective thing, if anything was effective at all, was probably spacing. Just back up off of people. Yeah, you know, and, and so, I think people are still doing that for the yeah. most part. When yeah. I'm in line at places like at a Thornton's or what have you, people are still, and it's not six feet. No, but you're, you're not breathing right. down my neck anymore. Yeah, give it a little bit more space, and I, and I welcome that. And yeah, I, absolutely. I got tired of having people in my hip pocket. Yeah. And it's like, I was like, dude. You know what? Just, it's okay. Yeah, just back off back. just a little bit. So, you know, there, there's probably a lot of different things that went into transmission of, of normal flu. So we'll see how that goes uh, now. But still, though, there's this... And, you know, people brought it up that a lot of this stuff that goes on out in the world is conditioning people to do what the government says or whatever particular authority, whether it be big government, big business, big grocery, big pharma, whatever. Big dental. Right. Big dental, yeah. I can't forget big dental. They're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, that's kind of my conspiracy theory about the whole thing. Is it's, it's le- it's, in a way, it says, it does say something about us if we voluntarily choose to do or not do because there's no real impact or harm to us if we yeah. don't do it. Because really, there's very little peer pressure. Nobody's going to shame you for the next three weeks because you didn't take your tar- cart back that one time. Yeah. But there are repercussions for other things, like the not wanting to wear a mask. That's right. Or not wanting to get vaccinated. That's right. There's severe repercussions for that, mm-hmm. whether you think that's a good thing or not. You know, for whatever reason, yeah, it's just, and that's kind of disturbing in, in many ways. Um, you know, what happened to my body, my choice? Well, apparently that only that doesn't work for vaccinations. Well, so it appears. Right. Um, and I got the so I'm not and I'm not saying this to somebody who doesn't want to get the vaccination. I got the shots. I haven't gotten a booster, but yeah, uh, I got all three. Yeah, yeah, boosters were. I didn't feel like or what's the what's the um, it's a three percent four percent. If I were more uh, more at risk person, yes, yeah. I probably would have. Yes. Um, and honestly, I was in no rush to get the shots to begin with because I work from home now because of all of this. Yeah. So I hardly ever see anybody. I'm healthy. Gut notwithstanding, I'm pretty healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, good heart, good blood pressure, cholesterol is mostly good, you know, all those kinds of things. So I feel pretty good about that. Mm-hmm. I don't have exacerbating conditions. Yeah, and I think as we, as we emerge from the far two year later side of the pandemic. Right. This past week was the exact two year yes. anniversary. Yes. I think what we are finding is yes, this thing was transmittable, but the danger primarily lied with those who had substantial comorbid conditions. Yes. And obesity, unfortunately, was one of those. Yes. Um, because of. One, it it obviously severely impacts your cardiopulmonary yes. functions, correct, and Breathing. lowers your immune system yeah. as well. Um, and of and, course, all the the folks in in nursing homes that uh, that they killed in New York, um, right? I mean, they're already at, at a they're, weak, yeah, they're at death's door to begin with. Weak point anyway. Uh, again, the normal flu would have been very devastating as well. Right. So the interesting thing about this, and again, I didn't want to turn this into a, into a COVID discussion, but since we're talking about that, just goes to show you how the, the peer pressure, this conspiracy to do what the group wants you to do, if you look at, first of all, flatten the curve did not mean what they said it meant. No. And when you look at the death rates early on, they were, you know, 7 8% when we first started out. It's because of all the old people who died or all the people who were already sick. Who died? Currently, the U.S. is like 1.75 percent of all COVID cases. Now, immediately, the conspiracy, the real conspiracy theorists is, well, all the ones that were reported. What about all the ones that were falsely reported? It's like, well, they probably even out. Yeah. yeah. So whatever. 
but only 1.75%, which is about twice, if I remember correctly, the flu death rate, which still, that's bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, 0.175% is bad enough, because it's still somebody dying. But it wasn't as bad, but the true fatality rate wasn't as bad yeah. as they made it out to be. If you take out all those really old people from the beginning, what's the rate? You know, the ones that were... If you take, right. And, and again, as they portrayed this as this thing that would sweep through suburbia and kill all your neighbors, no, that wasn't really true. No. It is it devastating? Yes. but And the lingering it, effects can be horrible. Even if you are healthy when you get yes, it, it's possible. But generally, yes. it took being fairly advanced in age with other health problems... Or substantially obese with right. which is its own health problem. It is, and I think as we get some distance and some perspective, and again, this is not to indict the obese at all. I know you know people struggle with weight. <laughs> yeah, I mean mine's extra. Everybody in my house has extra. I mean that's you know, and and I find sometimes the definition of you yeah, know, technically what? I am morbidly obese. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you have you know, if you're five eight. And more than 175 pounds, you're like grossly obese, which is just not realistic. Yeah, it's not. You're just not, you know, people of age 50 are going to be heavier than that. They just right. are. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm, I would like to lose another 50 pounds. So, yeah, you, so absolutely that would put me, but I don't feel like I'm an obese person. No. So, uh, but anyways. But it, it really, it really, I think we'll see as we get distance that this was something that in the main, wasn't as deadly as we was, thought. And, and really devastated a certain segment of the population, which right. is a shame, but it was not... Right, and we know that that's that kill essentially the case because the death rate in that first year when all of the, you know, the, the really bad cases got it and died, overall didn't really change that much from year to year. No. Which tells you that essentially not everybody who was going to die, because there were young people who died still, but I mean... It didn't really change the death rate in the U.S. So if it doesn't, that really means that, you know, it's probably not as bad as you think because those people probably would have died of something else. Whether it be, in you know, young ones, maybe they would have died of a car accident or something like that. You don't know. But mm-hmm. if it doesn't change it dramatically, that does that means it's probably not as bad as you think it is. Right. Uh, right. At least compared to other things. And and it, statistically, it became very it much a... Fuck the numbers. Yeah. Are we just, from we don't want hospitalizations to we don't want anybody to catch it. Well, that was never realistic. Right. At some point, you, everybody has to be exposed to it. Well, or just about everybody. But politically, you can't say that. No, politically, and you can't say that. That's what drove and so, a lot of us. But yeah. also, this really exposed a need for people in authority to exert control. And I point to not just Fauci and his ever-changing goalposts, but uh, uh, Gretchen Whitmer in Detroit, in Detroit, I mean, Michigan, uh, the governor there. You know, she went a little crazy with her edicts and what have you. And I don't think there's any way she's going to win her re-election uh, to, to the governor of Michigan. Yeah, yeah. Because she, she got to be a little nuts. Um, and, you know, all it's, of these... It's a savior complex. It's a savior... Well, it's, here's, here's my chance to be a hero. I have all this authority. I have to use it for something good. And they just didn't understand the concept of, hey, let people make their own decisions. Well, and granted, now there are times when, you know, maybe it is prudent to not let idiots, and there are a lot of idiots, yeah. make their own decisions. But in this case, maybe more of us could have made our own decisions than than they, did. They, they but again, it was that imposition of order and control mm-hmm. on a situation. And I think the shopping cart theory is kind of a, it's a, it's not an outgrowth of it. It's a symptom of of that societal need to have everybody conform. Ah. ah. Conformity. That's the great conspiracy. It's emblematic mm-hmm. of the drive for conformity. Yes. And mm-hmm. the person who desires conformity of others, it's an object about their character. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, because uh, conformity only happens in the presence of control. No, I think there's voluntary conformity. Well, yeah, but but ultimately, the absolute, the only true fulfillment, perhaps, of conformity 
comes with control. No, I, I, I disagree because society-wide, perhaps, but I think you can have conformity within smaller groups that are just mutually agreed upon. Yeah, no, it, I think you're right. I think it's it, this is all more about, um, and I always say, you know, there's there's a set of people out there that says you must think as I think. You must have made the same decisions I have made about my life, or I don't understand you. Right. You know, it comes up, uh, you know, uh, gun stuff. Um, you know, people say, "Well, I don't believe in guns." Well, guns are not imaginary. Guns are real. Right. <laughs> okay. It's not whether you believe in one or not, you know, I respect you enough as a person to make your own decisions. If you don't want a gun, don't freaking buy one. But right. don't tell me what I can buy and what I can't buy. Don't tell me, you know, my experiences are different. I have been in situations where, crap, I don't have my peace on me. And this is frightening, you know, because that's the comeback for someone right. who carries a firearm is, well, what are you scared of? Well, when I got my piece on me, nothing. <laughs> so, but, you know, yeah. If I walk around my neighborhood, if I'm in another suburb, do I feel like I need to be armed? No. But in my travels and in my day-to-day life, are there places I go where I feel like I'd like to have my firearm with me? Yeah. But unfortunately, your job won't let you take it in. <laughs> and that's place number one. Uh, there was a break-in this week. Uh, this, I don't think, has hit the news. Oh, really? But some fellow somehow managed to get into the guarded, gated, fenced back parking lot of the building. No. Got on the roof. That's no small fence. No, it's not. And it's not a, a fence fence. It's just, you know, poles on a top. So it's it's quite a challenge if he climbed it. I don't know if he got through a gate behind a car and nobody noticed or what. But at 7 a.m., he was on the roof of the building uh, pulling the electrical controls off the air handling chiller, which meant its pump failed, and we had water damage uh, in the building. Oh, wow. Water pouring down out of the rooms. What was he doing, trying to get the copper off or something? Or was he just being mischievous? Um, uh, he may have been getting moonbeams from... It was during the full moon. Okay. okay. So the full moon was this week, so... The voices told him what to do? You yeah. know, you got to obey the voices. This This... This air handling can, uh, chiller is the enemy. Um, you know, it's it's mind controlling you. So pull the wires out. And so that's what he did. On and that note, let's do a quick bourbon break because yes, we have not done one. We have not done um, one. And, and honestly, already, we're forty two minutes into this, and I really wasn't sure we were going to get anywhere near this. Uh, <laughs> so, but I love that you took it to conspiracy theories. Well, so. thank you, thank you. It so works. Uh, I am uh, uh, having a last little bit of this uh, McKenna, which is. Uh, that fifteen dollar bourbon we talked about last That's episode right, yeah. is really good. Uh, I had just finished what I had, so I poured a, just a splash of of it neat, so that I could uh, talk about the neat version. And still, again, definitely like it with a little bit of ice and that little bit of melt so that goes with yeah. it. Uh, it does. It's. I can't say universally that's going to be true, but it seems like every bourbon I've tried, it just tastes better. It somehow releases the compounds yes. in there uh, a little bit and gives it gives it a little more depth. Well, you know, chemically, the ice will change it, mm-hmm. uh, and especially the water yeah. changes it chemically. So there's, a, I think that there's just something about that that like, you know and we talk about it as releasing, and I think that's, and that's great an to put intention. It. Of the manufacturer. For, for I don't know if that's an intention. It's just a it, well, because again, I've not found a bourbon where that's not true yet. Right. Well, it, it's an intention to have the option. You can have it either way, knowing that there's a difference. They yeah, but distillers can aim for that as they blend. Yes, that's as, correct. As they formulate what they're going to do yeah. and they're aging and all that, they can aim for, we'd like for this one to have this flavor when a splash of water is added. Right. We know that alcohol is going to behave a certain way when you add these elements. Therefore, what do we want to have happen when those are? But as far as the elements behaving that way, that just seems, in my experience, limited experience so far, to be universal. Uh, but this still is not bad. Um, by itself, I don't know that I would go for it. Because um, it's just it, to me, it's just a fair to middling. But... I think it just smooths out so nicely with the with the splash of water and the, the ice. I enjoy it. Yeah, I'm having I'm having it for the first time, having it neat myself. Uh, it is um, subdued 
it, 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 it is soft. Uh, yeah. it, 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 but that's that's not a, that's not a slam at all. That's a, that's a strength actually. Uh, it is it does not have that harsh medicinal thing, which of course is a is a thing we don't yeah. want. It's got a very smooth. It is. Soft, it's got a bit more as, bite though when it is neat. Uh, uh, it, than it does when it is. I, I can I can see that. Yeah. I can I can understand. This is sweeter than some of the others that we've had. I don't think it's sweeter than the wild turkey. Mm, I just had that, and uh, I'm I'm of the opinion it's, it's a. It's a different type. This has got more of a yeah. syrup, uh, more mm. of a maple leaf flavor versus that pear flavor that we had. In I, know, I think, I, to me, the wild turkey was sweeter. What, what about you? Uh, I, I got more, a tiny bit more sweetness out of the wild turkey because of that awesome pear uh, flavor to it. I did not get quite as much of that out of the McKenna. Um, but it still is very good. Again, oh, yeah. Uh, I, I felt like it had a little chocolate to it, um, which I liked. And... Uh, um, syrup, kind of mapley, a little bit. Yeah, of that's what I'm getting here. It, it, yeah. it turned out that was really nice. So uh, I don't feel as complex as wild turkey, but at that price point, it is very hard to beat. That's right. Yes, that is not rot gut stuff. That is no. good, smooth, aged, good stuff. Henry right. McKenna. Uh, but I, I just had another quick little snort of wild turkey because I enjoyed that so much. Definitely going to add it to my shelf. That yes. is that is good stuff. I've been meaning to 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 do that, so I'm very glad that you uh, you beat me to it, Francis. We got a chance to try. Yeah, we didn't it even out. get a chance to try the uh, old Bart's down there. Well, we'll save it for the next time we're save out this it. way. That's right. Uh, bring it to my place when we get together next we time. We can do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, we spent 46 minutes on this, so we, we probably can wrap it up uh, in the last five or ten. And so, what so what do you guys think? You know, am I right here? This is part of a grander. Again, conspiracy is a strong word, uh, whether you call it trend or whatever, yeah. in, in this kind of compo- imposing some kind of conformity. It's, it's kind of a symptom of that ideal, yes. just as the masking is a symptom, granted a much stronger symptom, yes. uh, of that wanting to impose conformity. It's kind of like all the cancel culture and all that kind of stuff. Conformity with whatever the, the rule is... It seems to be just a really big deal right now. Mm-hmm. I submit to you, we have always uh, imposed a desire for yes. conformity in all that we do as a society. Yes. Uh, the question here, because the law itself is a form of <laughs> oh, absolutely, of, of, yes. of imposing all societies impose some form, form of, of conformity. Conformity. That's right. So we want to make sure we recognize that we're speaking of not the act of imposing conformity. That's kind of morally neutral. Stay with me for a second. And that, yeah, that, that's another argument. In, in we general, should... imposing conformity is is morally neutral because it depends on what kind of conformity you're imposing. Well, there the the mechanism issue. by which you impose the and the mechanism. Well, that's, yeah, yes, the, the method does matter. You're exactly right. But the uh, the actual act of imposing conformity is morally neutral because it's necessary for an orderly society. Right. So what if some people like to uh, go through the traffic <coughs> light when it's red and other people like to go through when it's yellow? Well, everybody likes to go through when it's yellow. That's not a good example. Right. Uh, right. But now there's one, uh, you know, stop when it's green well, or but only stop about, when it's yellow. You know, public nudity, you know, it's not permitted anywhere. With, with except very, on certain beaches. With, except, with, except for very specific uh, circumstances. That is, it's almost a universal, almost worldwide, not exception, not completely, but just about like that. That's conformity. Yeah, you know we are we are all required to wear our clothes in public. Right, cover up the naughty bits. That's correct, and you know there are like there's gradations, but ultimately, it's not permitted as a general rule. Yeah, and the bigger and the rounder you are, the more you have to cover. <laughs> and I don't just mean square footage. The more society wants you to cover. Well, that's that's, that's so in a way that is a societal and there and therein lies peer pressure and see therein lies mean. the issue because. Public nudity is not permitted by society as a matter of decency. At least that's the intention. However, you're exactly right. A morbidly obese person, we're still within the legal realm. You know, wearing it's not socially wearing speedos acceptable. is not socially acceptable. You know, and therein lies society conf- uh, pushes forth conformity outside the law because it's not a legal right. issue. It becomes a shaming issue. It becomes a shaming issue. And, that, and there are those that will say shaming is always wrong. 
I'm not, but sh- I'm not shaming sure. serves a purpose. Well, I see, I, I'm not sure they're Again, right. I'm it, not sure they're wrong. I think that I think matter. shaming itself is a morally neutral act, just like the imposing conformity. Yeah. Because it's just a way you conform the uh, imposed it, it, conformity. It, 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 yeah, exactly. Um, it's, it's what you impose or what you shame about and, the and how you, you go well, yes, and how you go about the shaming. For instance, if you go up to somebody and you, you privately attempt to shame them, that is probably more morally neutral than running out billboard ads trying to publicly shame somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that would probably be morally negative. Yes, uh, take, taking the person wearing the Speedos, the obese person wearing the Speedos aside, asking, handing them a robe and saying, please, would you do this? This is a public place, etc., etc. Versus, or, we're going to arrest you because you're indecent. We're taking you away. Or you frame or, it as, you know, or, look, point, or, point, I understand point laugh. You are, yeah, I understand you are comfortable with this, but people are laughing at you, and that hurts me, or that bothers me. Because that does, that really, I hate that. I can't stand yeah. that. And yeah, somebody that with, with, with the lack of emotional intelligence and lack of presence of mind to recognize, why are you doing that? And sometimes it's a matter of rebellion. Uh, nobody's going to tell me what I can and cannot wear. Well, it's, it's and, immature. You know, it, 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 very very yeah. much so. That's yeah. a very good way. Well, I mean, the shaming of somebody, um, you know, the yeah, laughing I mean, at the, the, the putting uh, them the, on TikTok and inviting comments about, look at this crazy guy. Right. Well, which unfortunately is very effective because as we all know, we still well, it's cyberbullying though. Very, it very much yeah. is. Very much is, uh, and it's it is a huge, huge issue that we have in many respects because what we're talking about here is you're using the the, the circus freak uh, approach. Yes, point uh, and laugh, and unfortunately, this is um, sustained and and amplified by oftentimes our reality TV shows. Well, yes, I was going to say, to me, the, the modern that's example of this is Honey Boo Boo. Uh, well, that's, that's a very good one. That's right. We Everyone that watches that is making fun of those people by definition. And it's also, and it, and it goes back to, thank God I'm not like that. That's that's kind of at the bottom of it. I don't know if everybody does, but th- probably I'd say the vast majority. Some people are just fascinated by what's different. And some, some people are similar and they think, oh, good for them. They did good. So, Perhaps. We're, we're, so I, I don't we're, think it's a universal. That, correct. It's a two, the society, the sample size of society is too diverse right. to make a universal statement on that. But there's no question that the reason that they a are on television, yes. the reason they're on television is because people be made will, spectacle. Is, spectacle. To be, is to be pointed and laughed at. Uh, not necessarily literally, of course. But well, I, I think the better way to put it is to be made a spectacle of. Yes, that's correct. Uh, because point and laughed at is 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 a one particular way of of exploiting those people whereas being made a spectacle of encompasses all the different ways but yeah, yeah yes exactly well you know most stuff and i'm not saying that most people would even realize that's what they're doing when they're doing it because well i think people it's like my 600 pound life that's or another good one. The um, the hoarder shows, or the hoarder oh, shows. Yeah, you know, those are those. I don't think because I don't think anybody watches the hoarder show and laughs. If well, they you do. You're a psychopath. Those people are being shamed, though. They are being shamed. Yeah. But I think it's more of a fascination in how do you get from what is a relatively normal household to some of those houses. So you take so, but basically, the, these television shows are taking advantage yes. and exploiting the mentally ill. The different, um, the obese, right. what, whatever well, that you've got. And in here. a way, that is a form of uh, enforcing conformity because you are it's trying this. to shame everybody else into not doing that. You're yes. shaming them, but you're also shaming everybody else into that not being is like that. Exactly correct. So and that, to me, strikes as grossly immoral. So on the one hand, you know, I look at the shopping cart theory, bring it back around. Yeah. Again, I look at that as, in and of itself, you know. Do I think you're a dick if you don't take the cart back? Eh, maybe a little. It depends on why you don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, I think it's a good thing to take it back for a lot of different reasons we've talked about here. And yet, I recognize it is that a symptom of that overall trend that is outside the government and law trying to impose conformity. Mm-hmm. And it may not even be related to any of the really negative stuff that we've talked about. Again, it's a symptom of something larger. You know, it's they truly want us all to be individuals, mm-hmm. except that one guy. Um, you know, 
and that's a very troubling thing uh, to me because when society starts imposing conformity, uh, especially in very small things, you really do start setting up people for conformity in very large things because they are used to it. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm not a conspiracy theorist where I think you know the government's going to shut everything down and you know take away everybody's guns and turn us into the Soviet Union. But you know, it, it's just you see the seeds of where people get those ideas. Yeah. yeah, and that's what's troubling because if you can see the seeds, it's not entirely impossible that governments don't try and do that because because yeah. you, you've seen we've seen it in history, especially yeah. when you elect individuals with that tendency, right? Because yeah. as a general rule, most political parties will lay out their tendencies. Yeah, we'll, well and I think most politi- well, and I think modern political parties. There's very little difference there in is. practicality, in reality, between Republicans and Democrats. They both what you're control. extreme about is only slightly different than what the other one is extreme about. That's right. You both want control. It's just who do you who do you want to control? Uh, and each one wants to control different aspects of well, society. And I would say that you know the who who do you want to control is still everybody for both. But the real real answer to that is everybody who's not part of the inner circle. Right. Yes. I mean, that's, that's it's the, a way of separating elites in yeah, some fashion. Exactly. You know, this is, you know, is there such a thing as a class of society? No. But this is as close as they were come. Right. And in the past, generally, distinguishing yourself meant accomplishing something worthwhile. Yeah. How do people who can't accomplish something worthwhile then end up distinguishing themselves? How do you get there? Well, you let some guy pee on you in bed and videotape it, or you become the supposed expert on diseases, or there's some sort of way of making yourself elite. And when you, you view in, you know, TikTok influencer. Yes. Or, and when you view yourself as elite, what good is that unless you view everyone else as sub? Something right, and see that's the problem uh, is that those who and want to impose that control have that influence. Well, how right. do you want to put it? Because um, in a way, they want to impose a certain conformity on the people who follow them, right? You know, because they want you to buy what I want you to buy, and things influence like that. only matters is if most people don't have it. True. Yes, um, and that's what, that's the idea. Is you, that's all, to yes. be elite. What that doesn't mean anything unless there are subs. A large right. number, a large of, number of subs, right. and how you distinguish, you know, uh, and like PJ has said when he talked about uh, uh, what was the book, um, Eat the Rich. Mm-hmm. Is that, you know, the difference is who gets the corner office, who gets to go on the uh, subsidized trip to the cheese quota uh, meetings in Brussels, and who has to stay home in in you know in snowy Oslo. You, you find a way to set yourself apart. And these are the criminals to me. You know, these are the people that this is what's wrong. You know, conformity is a balance. Yes, a certain level of conformity is necessary. To have society. To have a society. And we all, I feel, have an obligation to attempt to make society livable. Yes. You know, as I often say, everybody's got to hold up their corner of the quilt. If you let go of the quilt and get in the middle, I'm not just holding up my end, I'm holding up your end too. Yep. That's where society begins to break. Right. And you know, to use your metaphor, it invariably, for whatever reason, there's going to be a small percentage that will have to be in the middle of that quilt. Yeah. That we will have to pick pick up the slack for because of their circumstances. But the, the problem is when in, they yeah, the problem is when those people who are in the middle never want to get out of the middle. And yeah. take up their part the, again, the and when more are, keep joining them. Yeah, the ones who are capable of holding up a corner, but refuse. Yeah. Uh, so that you have to have that balance. So for me, I won't, you know, the card thing, it is, it's emblematic of me holding up my end of, of the social the, contract. Of the quilt, of the social contract. Very Rousseauian of you, Thank sir. You. Uh, yeah, there's a social contract that's implied in the cart corral that's been provided by the store. Right. And those who are el- the elites, those who have a particular kind of conformity, 
that they are trying to use society as opposed to the law, although sometimes it's also the law, yes. uh, to impose that conformity, they, they don't want to sign the contract. They think they are exempt from the contract. Right. They're exempt from the contract, and not only that, I think you make a good point, those who would take the conformity and move it from just social pressure to law. Well, I think it's bad when it goes that's either the, way. That's the tyrant there, though. Well, yes. That's, yes. that's the tyrant. Because uh, both are insidious. Yes. Because I think it's insidious when you have the societal conformity over things that absolutely mm. have absolutely no reason to have any kind of societal conformity over. Right. Well, they're not really contributing to order and us living together as human beings. No. Right. I mean, the cart thing does not really impact us living together. No. Well, unless your cart hits my car, but that's, again, that's the reason why you put it away. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I think it's a fine line because, you know, the tyrant can try and use the law to impose, like, if you don't mask or if you don't vax, you're fired. That's an example of using... Uh, the, the power yes. of the state to pushing impose you your... out of the public sector or even, you know, pushing you out of your livelihood right. over this kind of thing. Right, it, which which is very insidious. But also the the peer social pressure to do certain things. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it can be just as insidious. It just has <coughs> less power behind it. It has less formal power behind it. I mean... You look at cancel culture. I think that's just a great... And I don't mean the cases where you've got somebody who was a serial rapist uh, or serial sexual harasser. I'm talking about cancel culture because you don't hold the right thoughts. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's Very insidious. Right. Yes. Yeah. The thought police is... Yeah. And so, yeah. You know, on the one hand, um, the shopping cart theory, it's a fun exercise, but I think it's dangerous as the standard. Precisely because of what it's tied to in a greater sense. Yes. It's the morally inconsequential version of a much greater problem that has moral consequences. Well said, sir. I think you convinced me not to take my cart back anymore. Damn it! That's not what I meant to do! <laughs> well, remind me not to shop where you shop. I don't want my cart not to get any dents. <laughs> Power right. to the shopping carts, people. Yeah. So... I, I, I think I will, uh, even though it's it could be emblematic. Well, you've shamed you know, Mrs. Like, Martin into it. You can't stop now. I can't stop now. So it's even though it's maybe emblematic of the drive to conformity. Um, Precisely I, because it's meaningless, it's okay yeah, to do. Yeah, and, and I think I'll, I'll sidestep the Nietzschean implications there because, mm. you know, he would always say it's better to own yourself. Right. Well, you know, and, and in that case, he might say, you know, only a, someone who has a slave mentality would take the cart back. Yeah. Because you're doing something for somebody else. And that's pretty much a no-no when it comes to him. Yes. But I'll, I'll turn it upside down and say, I'm not doing it for someone else. I'm doing it to display my will to power over the errant shopping cart. Ooh, there you go. So therefore, I am an Uber There you go. Mix. <laughs> I am displaying power over the disorder of the stray shopping cart. Excellent, excellent. All right. Well, see, so, I mean, see how you could bullshit anything? Right. You can make, you know, philosoph- That's why philosophers have such a great gig. It's like statistics. You can make them say any damn thing you want. Right. Hey, man, brother. Sister. So. Siblings. Uh, siblings. Uh, so, Francis, uh, what's next, buddy? You know, we're going back to history next time. And, because this was Hoobajoo, we're going to be do. we're going to start a four-part series which I think is becoming very, very timely. We're basically, we're going to cover, over the next four months, enormously important peace treaties throughout recent history, as in the last three, four hundred years, that helped shape the world that we live in today. Interesting. Which I think is going to be very timely. We're doing these in chronological order? We're doing these in chronological order. Excellent, excellent. So that we're, we're basically moving to the modern world as we know it, in the midst of hopefully, in, by the time we finish this in four months, there will be a peace treaty with Ukraine over the issue. Who hopefully. knows what that's going to look like, and hopefully peace will reign. Uh, but Because we're in the midst of something that is kind of outside of this situation. Something that has broken the social contract. That is correct. That and that was supporting Europe. That's exactly right. So we're going to go in depth on... How we got to where we are today, and those steps of very brave statesmen 
throughout their various points in history that created, for good or ill, the world that we have lived right. in. Right. Now, listeners, that us. sounds a little boring on the face of it. Pastries, who gives a flying rats? No, this is going to be really good because we're really going to dig into some really interesting stuff, starting with next month's... The Peace of Westphalia. Yes, and this is extremely important because this ends the Thirty Years' War. Right. It sets up the Europe that is that happens to... That where we where we as a as the United right. States comes in ultimately allows the unification of Germany and <coughs> Italy, and ultimately leads to colonialism. That's correct. Right. And, and the, uh, the two world wars, the two, Cold yes. War, and where we are today. So it's going to be good. Hope you enjoyed another pointless discussion of eternal questions. Remember, new episodes publish every Friday at noon Eastern. Spread the word. We're on all the major podcast platforms. And leave us a comment or review because that helps others find us. We're on Instagram, Twitter, as well as our website, snakesandotters.com. I'm Martin. And I'm Robert. And I'm Francis. Join us next week, same snake time, same otter channel.